Bible says, a talk with Jesus makes things better. Amen. That's why I encourage you every day to spend some time in devotion with the Lord. Amen. It's nothing like my devotion time. Amen. Satan will want to make you feel like you're too busy for it. But don't let him trick you in the feeling that you're too busy, that you got too many things on your calendar to spend some time with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to say greetings to all of you, to our ministers, to Pastor Gordon, Reverend Vincent, Reverend Wynn, and to all of our officers, and to all of you. Amen. To those of you who've gathered with us online, grace be unto you from God our Father and from his Son, Jesus Christ. We're always happy to bring a blessing to you from God our Father. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and says, it's just good to be with you. It's good to be with you. And worship. Amen. Amen. I just don't understand how some people can get, week, get through week after week without turning aside to worship. Right. Because our God is worthy. Amen. Yes, he is. Turn to your neighbor and says, he is the living God. He is the living God. He's the one who keeps us breathing. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. I tell people all the time that Satan would take you out of here before nightfall if he could do it. Amen. Thank the Lord that he keeps us alive. Amen. Our scripture is taken from the book of Acts, the same passage that we use in our Sunday school lesson today. And to our Sunday school students, I hope that I'm not going to be redundant on you, but usually every time I go back to the Word of God, I find something new. So. Hopefully the Lord has given us something new as well. All right. Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, reading from the NIV. And when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violet wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seems to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. Let's say amen. amen. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they, came, when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them heard their, now let me say that again, but each one <clears throat> heard their own language being spoken. Yeah. Utterly amazed, they, they ask, on all of these who are speaking Galileans, then how is it that each of us hear them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Christians and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Satan does not miss a chance <laughs> to ridicule. Amen. Let's pray. Holy Father, we approach this hour with a sense of reverence and holy fear. You're an awesome God. You're the living God. You are the ruler of heaven and earth. You give life and breath to all of us. And so that we worship you, God. We praise you and give you thanks. You didn't have to let us be here today. But by your grace and mercy, we're here today. Thank you for another opportunity to worship, to sing songs of Zion, to hear your word read and preached, to participate in our prayers, to shout through the music that's being sung. Lord, thank you for your revelation. Thank you for just being here, Lord. Thank you for making us aware that you are the living God and that you are here that you are everywhere, that nothing, no, no place that we can go to escape your presence, but that you are here. Thank you for the principles of your word. You know what this, uh, this, uh, this congregation needs. You know what this, this assembly needs. You're the one who sat with me 
as I sat at my desk, as I looked at my computer, as I went through your word, you know what you said to me and you know what you once said. So God, I pray that you would preach through me today with the understanding that you want me to share with those who are listening. Build up your church, strengthen us for this troubled and difficult world that we're living in. God, we know that every day we hear something that seemed to be a little bit more grievous. So God, we pray that you prepare the people who are gathered in this place online and everywhere to prepare them to face this coming week. God, we pray that you'd bind the hand of the adversary who is at work in our world today. God, we pray that you'd strengthen us, that you'd build us up so that we could be the people that you've called us to be, so that we could be the salt, that we could be the light, so that we could share the gospel that you've left us here to share. Because you, we know that you've left us here because of your purpose, not because we've been so good or sanctimonious. You left us here because you have some work for us to do. God, we pray that you'd help us to get that work done. Pray that you'd take the blindness off of those who think they don't need you so that they could see a need for you. Pray that they would open up their hearts and receive you. Pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd visit with us again through the power of your Holy Spirit. The words of my mouth, meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, Allow me to make some comments before we get into the message today because there are a few things I need to say before we get started. And um, if I miss anything, charge it to my head, not to my heart. I want to begin by thanking uh, all of you for sharing with us in the Easter service last week, especially my, Mrs. Flurry, the drama team who helped us celebrate the resurrection of the Lord in our Sunday school program. A great time in the Lord. Amen. And I was just intrigued about mixing a little bit of Christmas with Easter. So so y'all might hear that preach one of these days. Sister Gloria, thank you for your creativity and putting that together. I want to thank all of the Sunday school students who participated. And I want to thank the parents for allowing your children to participate. Um, Mrs. Flory has given a heart to this ministry and you have participated. Amen. Um, Dr. Perry, who preached for us uh, for our worship service, a message on hope. Dr. Perry, I hope that you're listening to me right now. Very powerful message. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for a message on hope. So if you don't have hope, you don't have anywhere to go. So so message of hope. Thank you for letting us know that Jesus has done something for us so that we could have some hope. Let's say amen. 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 And then I want to go back to Good, uh, Palm Sunday, the choir who started the Holy Week celebration with us with the musical. And I want to thank you all for doing that. Amen. Amen. It's nothing like singing that will not help us to celebrate. Uh, when, when it's hard for me to worship, when it's, when it's hard for me to focus on the Lord, I just put on a song. Uh, I don't do like, what's Garland? I don't do like Garland. I don't start to sing in the song. I'll let somebody play the song for me. <laughs> My, my, my daughter gave me a song uh, for Good Friday, and I, I've been playing it all week. He said, I can only imagine. Yes. Yes. I, I can't play that song, you all, without shouting. Because you don't know how you will act when you stand in the presence of the living God. Amen. Yes. You can only imagine. Yes. So, 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 when it's hard for me to get into the spirit of worship, I put, put some songs on, and before that's over, I'm worshiping the Lord. Amen? Yes, now, now, I'm going to say all my preachers who participate on Good Friday, I'm going to ask them to stand. Amen. Amen. Well, these guys preached, didn't they? <laughs> Hallelujah. If you missed it, you just missed it, because I didn't tape that. But they, they, they blessed us by showing what God did for us in his son, Jesus, Amen. on the cross. And I cannot hear those stories without getting excited about God's love. Yes. Turn to your neighbor and says, God loves us. God. Unimaginable how much he loves us. Wow, wow, but he loves us. Loves us beyond uh, our faults. 
And Sister Ann, I'm going to ask you to stand, please. Sister Ann Jones, would you stand, please? Amen. Where are you, Sister Ann? Is Sister Ann here today? No, oh, she's not here today. Ann Jones facilitated, helped us with our grief seminar. She was the one who initiated that on yesterday. And, and our, our, our guest speaker, Dr. Essie Hall, gave a great, a great presentation on handling grief. And uh, we just praise the Lord for those of you who attended the grief seminar. Had a great time in the Lord. I hope that you got some nuggets that you can use. Because as I said in my presentation, grief comes to us unannounced. In other words, we don't have to invite it. <laughs> we don't have to send out no RSVPs. It'll just come anyway. Is that correct? And, and we, we can't tell it when to leave because it will stay as long as it wants. And so we, we just need the Lord's help to help us handle grief. And we got started. We had a great time in the Lord. Thank you, Dr. Essie Hall. I hope you hear me, hear me as I say that. I say that because all of us need to know that we are appreciated for the things that we do for the Lord. Now, I know that your great reward is going to come when you stand before him, but I want you to know that I need you while we're here. I need you to be involved in ministry. I need you at every level, every age group. And so I'm going to be calling on you. You're going to have to be saying no to me. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you again. I'm going to be like my youngest daughter. I'm not going to take no for an answer. Because we got a lot of work here to do. Amen. Amen. Okay. A lot of work to do. And I want to say thank you for all of you who are participating in ministry and helping us get this work done. Now, this brings us to the sermon for today. Uh, let's get into the sermon for today. I want to talk about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Let me hear you say that. Now, now, when you hear the word, the coming of the Holy Spirit, it, it sort of makes you think that he's coming in for the first time. But, but that's simply not true. The Holy Spirit has always been here. As a matter of fact, he was here before we got here. He was here back in creation. Is that good? And the Spirit of the Lord moved up on the water, and the Lord says, let there be light. So he was here before we got here. Is that correct? He was here throughout the Old Testament. You find all these guys who did great work for the Lord is because the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. Samson could have never done what he did to those Philistines had not the Holy Spirit come upon him. Is that correct? So when we find people doing great stuff in the Old Testament, the Spirit of the, the Holy Spirit was there. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. So I don't want you to get confused about this topic this morning, the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was in the New Testament before Pentecost. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was here before Pentecost. You know, Pastor, how do you know that? Y'all remember the story in John chapter 20, I believe it's in verse 21, when Jesus got up from the grave and met with the ten disciples the Lord says as the father he said Jesus said to his disciples father send me so I send you and then he goes on to say and he breathed on them and he says receive the Holy Spirit so 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 the Holy Spirit was at work before Pentecost is that correct anytime someone decides that they're going to follow Jesus the Holy Spirit has something to do with it so three and a half years before, when those disciples said, yes, we want to follow you, the Holy Spirit was there working in their hearts to make them want to follow Jesus. Is that correct? Yeah. And when Peter, Matthew chapter 16, said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Lord says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. It was the Holy Spirit who revealed to Peter who Jesus really was. Somebody ought to say Amen. So I just want to get that out of the way is I don't want you to get confused with the topic. Come on, preacher. I'm going to talk about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. But I just want you to know that was not the first time he was here. He's always been here. But what do we mean by the coming of the Holy Spirit? Let me say that. When the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, he did not come to save the first believers. I said it again. And if you have some problem with that, you can meet with me privately. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, yes. 
to the first church. He did not come to save the first church. They were already saved. Turn to your neighbor and say, they were already saved. All 120 of them, they were already saved. So, so, why did the Holy Spirit come at Pentecost? That's what I want you to think with me. Why did he show up at Pentecost? What was he doing showing up at Pentecost? Well, this is what the Lord says to me. I believe this passage would confirm it. He's saying that I have come so that you may be empowered to do the work that I've called you to do. I've come to give you some stuff that you don't have. Turn to your neighbor and say, the Lord gives us some stuff we don't have. Now, now, now I try to be faithful in preparing my messages I sit there and try to make sure that I get the PowerPoint so that you can understand basically where I'm going with it. Yeah, yeah. And when I'm through, I'm not through. Mm. All right. yes, sir. Because I cannot preach without the power of the Holy Spirit. If anything that I do, if anything I've ever done, if anything I've ever done for the Lord is effective, it's because that I received the help of the Holy Spirit. I believe, I believe that's what the Lord wants us to focus on. Yeah. Yeah. Turn to your and says, neighbor, neighbor, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, that first church, that first bunch of disciples, that first bunch of followers who were following Christ, they already knew what God wanted them to do. As a matter of fact, the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Lord had, had, had told them, he says, hey, look, I want you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea yeah, yeah. and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He had already made it clear that when I leave, I want you to stay here and be my witnesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there was not any confusion. There was not any confusion. Any confusion. Let me say that again. Any confusion about what they needed to do. They already knew. Is that correct? Because Jesus had told them of this. But he told them, I don't want you guys to leave Jerusalem. I don't want you guys to leave Jerusalem until you have been empowered. I love this. Didn't they know what the Lord, hadn't they, didn't they, didn't they not have this four spiritual laws? <laughs> Had they, had they not seen Jesus witness to folk? Had not they been on witnessing missions by themselves? Had not they, did not they know what the Lord wanted them to do? And, and, and could, 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 you know, I, I, um, I preach like this because I get a lot of stuff before me. A lot of people who have done it well, and um, they can teach you how to do it. And I don't want you to feel like you shouldn't study that stuff and learn from it because a lot of good principles are there. This is what I want you to say. What you believe from the message today. You are not ready to witness. You are not ready to do the Lord's work. You are not ready to do the mission that God has called you to do until you have the help of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to re-preach this because this will keep us from being too dependent on ourselves. This will keep us from being too dependent. The Lord says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And if the spirit of God is not there, if he's not giving you the power to do what he's asked you to do, you're not going to get it done. You may be as smart as a whip. You may have all kinds of degrees behind your name. He may be able to be preached, they preach like what? Peter and Paul. <laughs> Come on, preach. I say this because I think that we all need to spend some time waiting to be filled, desiring to be filled, looking to be filled by the Holy Spirit for the work that God has laid on our plates. Uh, uh, 
Are we clear about the theme for the message? Yeah. Amen. Are you clear about what the Lord wants you to do? Amen. The Lord says, don't you go out there and try to do it on your own. Wait until you've been empowered by the Spirit. He said this in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Don't you leave Jerusalem until you've been empowered. Is that correct? That's right. And I love this because those disciples remembered what the Lord says. Now, not just talking about the 12, but all 120 of them who were out on the Mount of Olives, who watched him ascend into heaven, they watched him go into heaven. But you know something? They didn't go out witnessing right away. They, they went back to Jerusalem. Yes, sir. And they went into the upper room. Yeah, that's right. The same place where Jesus had celebrated Passover with his disciples. The same place where he would introduced the Holy Communion. They went back there and they stayed up there. Sunday school students, how long did they stay up there? Come on now, Sunday school students. How long did they stay up there? I can't hear it. How long did they stay up in the upper room after they came back from the Mount of Olives? 50 days. Not 50. Not seven. 10 days. All right, Jesus got out of the grave, is that correct? How long did he stay on the earth trying to convince his disciples that he was alive? He stayed on the earth 40 days, is that correct? Pentecost come at the 50th day so that means when they came back from the ascension, they went into the upper room and they spent the, uh, they spent the next 10 days waiting on the Holy Spirit. Are we, are we together? I'm going to get some of y'all in Sunday school yet. I love this because two of the things you said about that waiting that you need to grab hold to. They were on one accord. I mean, they were not fussing up there. <laughs> they were not having disagreements up there. They were waiting on one accord. Tell your neighbor they were waiting on one accord. They were waiting for the same thing. They were waiting for the filling of the Holy Spirit. Is that correct? Not only were they waiting on one accord, but they were in prayer. Now, you know, we used to have what is called, before the pandemic, we used to have what is called all night prayer. Yes, sir. And the first time I introduced that, Pastor Gordon, is. Some people say, what are y'all going to be doing all night? I said, pray. <laughs> Can you imagine those first group of disciples, all 120 of them spent a 10-day period in prayer. They didn't know when the Holy Spirit would come, but they were in prayer for 10 days. Let me, let me just throw this one in. Great things happen when God's people get serious about prayer. We said this all time on Thursday nights. Prayer meeting is one of the most important meetings of the church. Let me hear, me, let me hear y'all say that. I'm going to see if I get some more of y'all show up on prayer meeting tonight. Because when God's people are serious about prayer, you get God's attention. I'm going to say it one more time. When God's people are serious about prayer, we get God's attention. Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm not talking about trying to fool him. Right. You can't fool him. You can't pretend. Right. You got to be serious right. Right. about prayer. I remember my daughter who had gone to medical school. I told this before. And she had gone to college for med and gone to um, medical school and had done um, four years in residency. And she was getting ready to get her license to practice as a physician. Mm -hmm. And she failed the test mm. two times. So she had one more time to take the test. Mm. Can I tell this? Come on, tell the story. Tell us. And she told us, and um, we said, now, I know she hadn't gone to school 12 years and didn't know anything. <laughs> It was just that she needed to pass that test that, that, that would write off and give her a, a medical license. So, so my wife and I came back and we got some church folk involved in fasting and in prayer. We said, we know our daughter can do that, but we just need some help of the Holy Spirit. And we started praying about this. Deborah will tell you, 
And as we prayed, fasted, and the last time she took that test, she took it and she passed in flying colors. Not because she knew anything more. I'm saying, I'm saying, I believe, this is what I believe. You may believe anything you want to believe. I believe it was because God's people got serious in prayer. Turn to your neighbor. neighbor. Great things happen happen. when God's people people are serious in prayer. prayer. Now, I thought I was going to breeze through this sermon in a hurry because I did this in in, um, Sunday school this morning, but I'm I'm gathered to stay here for a little while. Can I stay here a little while? Let's, Let's look at the upper room scene. All 120 people were gathered there in the upper room scene. While they were there, praying, while they were there on one accord, the Holy Spirit broke in on them. Turn to your neighbor and says the Holy Spirit broke in on them. Now, if you don't believe that, you read it. It says, he came into the room and he filled the room. He came into the room. It was like a windstorm. Yeah. How many have been in a windstorm? <laughs> if you've ever been in a windstorm, yeah. when it really sh- it is shaking the house, yeah. when the wind is shaking the house, when it's shaking the windows in the house, and if you don't have windows, when the wind is making sound coming through the doors, making music coming through the doors, you know that something ain't going on on the outside because the wind is in the house. The Bible says that's the way the Holy Spirit came to those first disciples. Now, now, it wasn't subjective. Somebody saw one thing, somebody saw something else. All 120 people experienced the coming of the Holy Spirit in such a powerful way. Amen. So nobody could deny down the road that this didn't happen because all of them had the same testimony. The wind shook the house. Turn to your neighbor and says, the spirit shook the house. <laughs> I love this. The Lord will shake you up too if you let him have your way. Are we still together? But just since somebody might have missed it still, the Lord says, all right, I'm going to give them something that will appeal to the vision. Senses. I'm going to give them something to see. Tongues like fire came into the room separating itself, cloven tongues of fire, came the rest on each one of them, all 120 of them. The Bible says, and they were filled. Turn to your neighbor and say, spoke in tongues, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Love this. (laughs) I love this. So God gives us what we need when we need it. <sighs> Speaking in tongues. I want you to know that you didn't. This is a gift of the Spirit now. I want you to know that you're not going to be able to do this by yourself. I'm going to give you the ability to speak in other tongues. I'm going to give you the power to do your ministry. I love this. I love this. And um, I think Garland sang this song at the, uh, at the offertory. And I said, why is it that he sang that song? And, and uh, my daughter played a song for me at the beginning of, the, of, of, of our Sunday school lesson. I said, now, why did she play that song? And the Lord said, don't you know, boy, I knew what was going on? Don't you know I knew what you were preaching about? How many want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? All right. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, and it tells you that you have to let the Spirit control just like, just like liquor controls you. <laughs> Am I making this up? Am I making this up? In other words, if you want the Holy Spirit to surrender you, you to fill you, you have to surrender. Surrender, surrender, surrender. For the less of you, the less of you, the more of him. How many want to be filled? If you want to be filled, you've got to say yes to the Lord and no to yourself. 
Yes to the Lord and no. Love this. Love this. So these bunch of folk, the first church, are now filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Another expression of the church. They are empowered for ministry. They have been given the power to do the witnessing that they have been called to do. Am I making sense? Yes, you are. Now, they already knew how to do it, but now they have the gasoline to do it. <laughs> Try to drive your car without gasoline. Now, some of them may have electric cars. Try to drive your car without juice. It ain't going nowhere, right? So they have the power now. They have the power to do it. And so they leave the upper room and they come down into the streets of Jerusalem. Turn to your neighbor and say, they come down. You know, God wants us to be in church. But we can't stay here. The Lord wants us in our community. He wants us in our neighborhood. He wants us in contact with people who need to hear the message. And so that's what those first followers of Jesus did. They came out of the upper room. They came out of that sanctified place and went down into the streets of Jerusalem. And they started to talk about Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, they started to talk about Jesus. Now, they had not been to language school. They didn't know, Dick and Ron helped me out this morning by showing all the places where people came from. That's it. And you'll find that there were people in Jerusalem from every sector of that known Roman world at that time. And they spoke different languages. And those who were preaching only spoke Aramaic or maybe Hebrew. And by the time the words left their lips in Aramaic, and reach the ears of those who were listening from different languages. The Holy Spirit already empowered. The Holy Spirit had already, uh, the Holy Spirit had already translated the message. Yeah, yeah. So everybody who heard heard in their own language. This was a miracle. Turn to your neighbor and says this was a miracle. This was such a this was such a powerful miracle. The folks started talking about it. They said, "How else can we can hear in our own language? Are not all of these are Galileans?" Are not all of these people are speaking Aramaic and now we can understand in Chinese? That's just, I added that, you all. That was not the end of the miracle. Turn to your neighbor and says, that was not the end of the miracle. You see, God knows what's, in other words, I love the fact that he can intercept Satan before he gets started. As, as people are rejoicing in the fact and, and awe at what has happened, there was a group of people, I have to believe they were motivated by Satan. We got an explanation to this event. These folk are drunk. <laughs> These folk have been drinking too much. Eli made that same mistake about Hannah, didn't she? The reason I share that is because this gave the Holy Spirit an opportunity to work through Peter. Peter got up and he explained the event from Holy Scriptures that way before this event happened, the prophet Joel said this would happen. Wow, didn't this get their attention? I don't know. Peter did not just think this up on his own. It was the Holy Spirit using Peter to go back into the scriptures to say something that God will keep his promise. This happened because yeah. the scriptures has already said it happened. And then Peter went on to preach a very powerful message, so I encourage you to read the whole thing. And 3,000 people got saved in one day. Turn to your neighbor and say, 3,000 people got saved. Now, 3,000 people got saved not because Peter was a good preacher. Peter got saved because the Holy Spirit was at work in Peter. Are y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Now, I, 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 I want to lift you out of the first century and bring you to the now century. 
Turn to your neighbor says, it's time now to come to the now century. What is the Lord teaching us about this amazing work on the day of Pentecost? This is what I want you to take home with you. Love this. All of us need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit if we're going to do our work the work that God has left us here to do. Preacher, deacon, choir member, usher, whatever ministry position that you're serving in the church, if you're going to be effective, you're going to need the help of the Holy Spirit. You're not going to be able to get it done. You could be as prepared as you want to be, but you're not going. I say that because I want you to be, to be dependent on the Holy Spirit. I want you to feel like you're dependent on the Holy Spirit. The Lord says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Unless the Lord keep watch over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Unless you have the help of the Holy Spirit, you can't do anything that will have pleased the Lord. You need to be filled. And I've already told you how to be filled, right? Say yes to the Lord and no to yourself. Surrender to the Lord, says, I surrender all. Not some of it, but I surrender all. Amen? Amen. Here's another reason why the Holy Spirit is such an important person in our lives today, why he makes such great impact. He helps us with our prayers. Turn to your neighbor and says he helps us with our prayers. How many of you have been at a place where you didn't know how to pray? How many have been at a place where you didn't know what to say? How many have been at a place where you felt too weak to pray? Too depressed, too discouraged to pray. I love this. Because when those times come, I want you to remember that you are not alone. You have an intercessor, and his name is the Holy Spirit. Paul tells us he helps us in our weakness. Turn to your neighbor and says he helps us in our weakness. He goes on to say, we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us in groans that cannot be uttered in words. So when you don't feel like praying, when you don't fill up the praying, when you're too hard to, when it's too hard for you to pray, when it's hardest to pray, remember you got a prayer partner. Yeah. 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 He has come. He has come. He has come to help you with your prayers. That's right. Go ahead, preacher. Amen. And one thing I know about him, he won't pray anything that's wrong. That's right. He'll pray just what is right. He'll hit the nail on the head every time. He knows. Turn your neighbor says he knows how to pray. I should have told y'all to take these out because I got two more. Here's the third one. The Holy Spirit. We need the help of the Holy Spirit because he'll speak truth to the believer. Yes, he will. Turn to your neighbor and says he'll speak truth to the believer. <laughs> you know, we're living in a world where there's so much falsehood. We're living in a world sometimes we don't know what to believe. Sometimes I tell my wife, just cut the TV off. We, we're not going to even watch it on the day of prayer meeting. Because I don't want my mind confused because I don't know what's true and what. But I tell you something, church. If you're close enough to the Lord, he will reveal. The Holy Spirit will reveal the truth to you. Right. Some people will be lying and they don't think you know they're lying. You already know they're lying. Because the Holy Spirit has already told you. can see through it. You can see through it because the Holy Spirit helped you see through it. That's right. Not because you're so smart. Come on. Come on, preacher. But because he is the spirit of truth. That's right. And he will speak nothing but the truth. He will never speak error. He will speak nothing but the truth to you. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. I, I thought I'd be through by now. Yes. Okay, <laughs> Take your time. Go ahead. You're preaching good. 
So, so, so when I'm studying God's word, I study God's word with the help and the aid of the Holy Spirit. When I'm facing a confusing situation, I don't know which way to go up or down. I spend some time seeking the, the, the will and the desire of God's Holy Spirit because I know he'll give you the right way. When I'm facing a confusing situation where right look wrong and wrong look right, I know the Holy Spirit will tell me the truth. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, am I making sense? Can anybody get excited about this stuff as I excited about? I just thank the Lord that I got someone who will tell me the truth. Even when I don't want to hear it, I got someone who will tell me the truth. He's our friend, our brother. He's our paraclete. He's our walking stick. He's our leaning post. He is the one the Lord promised. He is our Comforter, our head, our God. Yeah. And let me close this point by saying that when you hear his voice, obey him. Yeah. Now, now, I think here's the first one. He will always represent Jesus Christ. You know, you know, some people talk so much about themselves, they don't know who they're talking about. <laughs> Because, you know, they, 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 want, they, they just want the spotlight. Yeah. But listen, God the Holy Spirit yeah. does not talk about himself. Right. He says he will not talk about himself. He will not say, hey, look, y'all look to me and, and, and show me how big I am. Yeah. The Lord says he will, take, he will take from what belongs to me. He will take what belongs to my Father and he will share it with you. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He will always represent Jesus in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. If you want to know Jesus, get in touch with the Holy Spirit because he talks. If you want to know the Father, get in touch with the Holy Spirit because he, the Holy Spirit talks about God the Father. Somebody say amen. amen. He represents God the Father. God the Son, in your life. He has moved into your heart. He has moved into your life the moment you've accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. You may not feel any different. You may not know how he looked like. You may not be speaking in tongues. You may, may not turn, be turning to flip dancing. But if you know Jesus, Holy Spirit is living inside of you. And he's there for your good. He can be grieved. He can celebrate with you. He can encourage you. He can give you words to say when you don't have words to say. He can bring back to your memory stuff that you've forgotten about. He is your helper. He's your paraclete. Yeah. Well, why are you saying this with such excitement, Pastor? I'm saying this with excitement because I want every one of you, when you go out of here today, is to look to him for his help. Yeah. Keep your mind. Keep your mind and your heart focused. I said to the Lord, I said, now, Lord, you know I got a, I got a tough week this weekend. I got three preparations to make, and I don't know whether I'm going to have the time to get it all done. The Lord says, look, don't you know, you're not doing it by yourself anyway. Trust me. Trust me. You got somebody to lean on. You got a partner. You got a friend. You got God living inside of you. He's able. Turn to your neighbor and says, he's able. There is nothing too difficult for him. He cannot fail. If the church is going to be successful and whatever we plan to do, we got to lean on him. We got to depend on him. We got to listen to him. We got to obey him.
God, and can y'all sing He is able? Can y'all sing that? Is Garland still here? Can y'all sing He is able? Wait till he come down. Wait till he come. He's able. <laughs> now, now, before y'all sing that, let me let me give the invitation. We're gonna see. I want y'all to help them out. Do y'all have it up on screen up there? If you have it on the screen, put it on the screen. Because I want you to believe when you sing this song that he is able. Father, now, um, as we get ready to give the invitation, I believe that somebody want to say yes to you. So yes to your Holy Spirit. And now, uh, I'm praying now that as they listen to me, I hope that this message has opened their hearts just a little bit so that they will know that you are able. You can do what you said you would do. You can do anything but fail. You can save them and you can prepare them for eternity. You can, fa you can prepare them to face whatever events that they're facing in life. We know that you're able. So Lord, if there's anybody, if there's anybody within the sound of my voice who want to give themselves to you right now, help them to do that as we sing. You are able. Let's stand, you all. after me now to him who's able to keep us from falling present us faultless before the presence of his own glory the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power now henceforth and forevermore you are dismissed
Thank you for dancing for me last week. God bless you, sis. God bless you, my man. Thanks for coming. God bless you. Tell me, I said hi. God bless you, sis.